Hey guys, it's December. Isn't there supposed to be some kind of big event going on this month? Well, last year we did Fatal, but that was stupid. Well, we could do the review that we should have done in November of last Shut year. Shut up! I have an idea! We'll ask Tiny Gundam. Hey, yeah! Tiny Gundam, what do you think we should do? Get to run a fifth edition of Kakunin Shimas. Anata no mayo no Kakunin Shimas. Kure ga iro ni naru tame ni anata no chan desu. That's a great idea! More like shadow fun. Literally my idea, but whatever. Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we eventually take the bullets for you. Shadowrun is set in the dystopian future of 2074. It's a slick, style-over-substance world of techno-shock and moral compromise. With the world dominated by scheming, ruthless corporate interests and the corrupt machinations of the wealthy elite, trust is a rare commodity here. Man can be augmented with invasive technology, and the internet has evolved into an entire virtual world known as the Matrix. So far, we're on pretty familiar ground here, as this is all straight out of a William Gibson or Philip K. Dick novel. Corporations run everything, there's cybernetic craziness and VR hackers running amok. Been there, done that. Thing is, Shadowrun doesn't stop there. You see, back in 2012, something happened that made the world an order of magnitude weirder. Turns out that what the end of the Mayan calendar was predicting wasn't the end of the world, but the beginning of a new age. One moment science was the reigning champion, the next thing you know sorcery is giving it a run for its money. Perfectly ordinary humans gave birth to dwarves, elves, orcs, and trolls as humanity gave way to meta-humanity. With the magic came the monsters of folklore and ghouls and vampires prowled the back streets looking for prey. The great dragons flew through the skies for the first time in thousands of years. Magic was back in a big way and humanity was going to have to deal with it. So that's the world your players live in. The borders may have changed, but the game hasn't. The powerful still want to stay that way, and they will screw over anyone to see that they do. That's where you come in. You are the ultimate in deniable assets. Hired mercenaries working outside the system due to the corpse's dirty work for them. It's illegal, and it's dangerous, but it's never boring. You're a shadow runner. A hot wind blows the smell of industry through the streets. Monoliths rise in the smog as you wait for your Mr. Johnson to arrive. Please describe your characters. I'm a cyber slinger, a real cowboy with a reputation for spine cracking. I feel more comfortable online than in meat space. As a result, I have expensive bills and something of a beetle habit besides running pays for that need. I'm a mercenary, a real street samurai. I was born to wealthy parents, but an early life of idleness has been sliced out and replaced with cold wire and hard chrome. Now I run to feel the rush and to maintain my upgrades. Wow, so you guys really know this game. Okay, well, I'm a troll, and I guess I'm a shaman? I, I got kind of confused with the whole priority thing in Kerrigen, though, so I've got some spells and some ADAP powers and stuff. Wait, you're a troll? You do know they have a max charisma of, like, four, right? Uh, I guess. I mean, I really wasn't planning on being the one who did all the talking, though. I mean, I figured you could do that. You could afford to be up front if anything goes wrong, real fighty and stuff. Dude, he's more chrome than meat. His essence is probably sitting in the decimal points. You're a shaman. You're supposed to have mad moxie. My social stats are somewhere between low and not. Well, why would you expect me to be the life of the party just because I can cast spells? Because your magical tradition uses charisma to resist drain, genius. Look, damn it, just cut me some slack, will ya? I mean, I, I spent priority pretty much just diagonally left to right. Mother of God, you didn't. It is it that bad? Okay, did we come here to whine over character sheets or we come here to run? Run. Good then, a long black night sky pulls up and a tall woman wearing sunglasses, an armored suit, and a Yamaha Rigan steps out. At a glance, Shadowrun's system looks pretty straightforward. Task resolution uses a simple dice pool mechanic rolling a number of six-sided dice and accumulating a hit for every five or six that turns up. The trick is, the engine actually branches from there into a sort of tripartite hydra of different subsystems. Because the game is trying to encompass the physical combat in meat space, electronic warfare in the Matrix, and mages dueling in the astral plane simultaneously, this is probably unavoidable. 
While all three arenas use the same basic mechanics, the devil is, as they say, in the details. It's fairly crucial to learn how your character's area of expertise works before you start. Character generation in this system has ended its brief dalliance with the huge pile of undifferentiated points method that frustrated us a bit in 4th edition. Instead, players prioritize five aspects of their characters, which determine the resources available for attributes, skills, metatype, gear, and magical potential. The rest is simply point by. A runner team needs a good mix to succeed, but the game doesn't limit players according to finite class templates. You decide how to get the job done. The tall woman is joined by another from their side. She looks almost identical in every way to the first. The newcomer opens the rear door without taking her eyes off you. Armored business suits, top of the line heaters, no visible chrome. Let's make these socks go quick, because I am not hot to tango with the murder twins here. She opens the door. An average sized man steps out. He's wearing an immaculately tailored suit ran through with LEDs that causes it to shimmer slightly. He's wearing green stylized shades and a haircut that probably costs more than your apartment. The job's not rogue. I'm climbing his about to a peg level plex. We're approaching a high level eval that cuts Solid Man from the rising stars. I need spine crackers to direct the competition with a high and shiny that leaves me diamonds with the boss man. Soka, in and out slack hacking to false flag the pay data. In kindergarten, we can gender it, frag your own man, and leave you with an easy climb to the executive hot life. Any sec to geek, cause that tramps the jingle. Huh? Sex tight, I shacked it myself. That means I cop it cradle close. You can avoid it. The tangle interface is rigged with no haptics. Simple spiders stalk the mesh, so slip silent. Don't try sculpting. Upload the chip truth, slop, and run. So how's this job, Jen? Seven grand, nut new in script. Untraceable bonds. Swag! Okay, so do I have to buy Rosetta Stone for this game, or is someone gonna tell me what the hell you're all talking about? <laughs> Let me start off by saying that this is the first edition of Shadowrun that I've ever truly enjoyed. I've always kind of liked the setting, but I was more of a Rifts guy personally. Oh, here we go. We're gonna talk about Rifts today! You don't say, but the setting is super neat. It has its own angle, even if that angle's only about one degree from the Mona Lisa Overdrive. That's a bit unfair. Shadowrun really reaches towards having its own identity, with all of its exploitation and the pains it takes to blend together fantasy elements with nods to realism. Yeah, as a graduated rivet head and massive fan of Bill Gibson, Shadowrun is right up my alley. But in the past, I've been put off by the system mostly, especially Kerrigen. I like this edition, however. It makes Kerrigen way less of a chore. Problematically, however, it doesn't make learning the engine any less of a chore. Exactly. There's the hacking system, the drone system, the personal combat system, the magic system, the hardware system, the item modification system, the vehicle system, etc. They all share some similarities, but they all work just that little bit differently. That does come with some bog. Still, 5th edition is a lot better than the previous versions. If you do want a gripe to really sharpen your claws on, then take a look at how these systems are arranged throughout the book. Man, the art is gorgeous, the binding is tight, the printing is high quality, but the format is garbage. Amen to that. Trying to learn how any one aspect of the system works in this game is often an exercise in flipping back and forth between chapters in the book to reference and cross-reference different parts of the game that should really have been right next to each other. Yeah, sometimes one rule requires you to have three different pages open in three different chapters, and possibly the index as well. This game really needs to be an enhanced PDF. Likewise, I'm not all that happy seeing how little wear that deluxe gold leaf edition was able to take. By the end of the first week Fox had it, the words 5th edition were already worn off of the binding. If you get one of these, put it up. It will not stand up to any form of play. The new engine does what it needs to pretty well. This version is more forgiving than previous editions have been, and you can really play whatever you want to. If you want to play it, make sure you've got a GM with some experience under his belt. If you've got new players, take it easy on them for a little while till they learn to run the shadows with style. Otherwise your party will burn faster than a riding on full auto. We recommend this game to experienced players looking for a thrilling system and returning shadow runners. New GMs might find themselves a little lost and overwhelmed. Until next time, we leave you with these words of wisdom. Watch your back, shoot straight, conserve ammo, and never ever cut a deal with a dragon. Thanks for watching.